May I request Ms. Sangeeta Singh, Member Executive SCBA, to kindly present a bouquet to Mrs. N. V. Ramanna. We are extremely thankful to you, ma'am, for accepting our invitation and gracing the occasion. Honorable Mr. Justice N. V. Ramanna, Chief Justice of India. Honorable Mr. Justice Yuyo Lalit, Chief Justice of India, resignate. Honorable Judges of the Supreme Court, Mr. Tushar Mehta, Learned Solicitor General of India, Family Members of Justice N. V. Ramanna, Sri Vikas Singh, our President, Mr. Pradeep Kumar Rai, our Vice President, Mr. Manoj Kumar Mishra, President Skora, Mr. Sneashish Mukherjee, Vice President Skora, Mr. Devrath, Secretary Skora, Senior Advocates, and my fellow colleagues at the bar, a very good evening to you all. Today, we have gathered here to bid farewell to Honorable Mr. Justice N. V. Ramanna, Chief Justice of India, and how popular he has been as a Chief Justice can be seen with the way the, the whole auditorium is full. This, this is the sixth function, I guess, we are having in this auditorium, but I have never seen such a crowd. This just shows the popularity of Sir. He was elevated as Supreme Court Judge on 17 February 2014 and appointed Chief Justice of India on 24th April 2021. In his tenure of more than eight years as a Supreme Court Judge, he gave numerous landmark judgments and in his tenure of tenure as Chief Justice, Collegium cleared many names and more than 250 vacancies were filled. In fact, during his tenure as Chief Justice of India, nine judges took oath on the same day on 31st August 2021 for the first time in the history of Supreme Court as a Supreme Court Judge. His initial tenure as Chief Justice was during the tough period of COVID, which had its own challenges. As a Chief Justice, sir, you resolved many issues which were standing tall for the past three years. In his tenure, more than 460 lawyers have been allotted chambers in the additional building complex D Block. <laughs> Parking in Basement 1 and Basement 2 in additional building complex, which was closed for last three years, was again opened two months back. Members have been now saved from this scorching heat by giving this auditorium to SCVA for holding its function with more pride and dignity by Sir. Also, a utility launch for food at subsidized rates has been opened near Yoko Bank in Supreme Court. Again, it was an initiative of Sir. Thank you, Sir, for considering the issues which were brought, uh, within, uh, brought to you by SCVA and for resolving them in the interest of the bar. May I now request Mr. Pradeep Kumar Rai, Senior Advocate and Vice President of SCBA, to kindly give his welcome address. Honorable Justice N.B. Ramanna, the Chief Justice of India, Honorable Justice Uday Umesh Lalit, the CJI designate, Mr. Tusar Mehta, Solicitor General of India, Mr. Vikas Singh, President Supreme Court Bar Association, <coughs> Rahul Kausik, Secretary SCBA, Manoj Mishra, who is standing there, and Sonia Mathurji, I can see them standing uh, there, uh, pres uh, President Skora, Devdat Secretary Skora. Honorable P. H. Parikh, sir, six time president of Supreme Court Bar Association and ten times president of SCORA. Honorable judges of Supreme Court of India, family members of Honorable Justice Ramanna, Sri Mala, ma'am, and the, both the daughters, they are here, son in law is here, even people from village, they are here. We all, the entire executive committee of SCBA, welcome you all here. Sir, the gathering and the crowd which we are observing here is not that, that only. The similar number is standing and waiting outside. That shows the popularity of Honorable Justice and V. Raman <laughs> Honorable Justice Ramanna is son of the soil. He was farmer. Thereafter, he became journalist. And thereafter, he started practicing in local high court before the end cat. One of his junior, he is here, Mr. Bithalla Nagishraeshwar Rao, who was first junior of sir, and when sir, uh, when sir was there standing council of cat, he got him appointed additional standing council. And when sir was elevated as judge of the high court in year 2000, Lordship got him the standing council panel of Union of India. 
almost all those lawyers and the judges from various high courts who are present here that is a kind of a statement that how lord chief has actually functioned and taken care of their friends and the professionals and colleagues lord chief when joined supreme court as judge of supreme court of india he had one motto and he said the opportunity to serve as a judge came with a tremendous responsibility but i have never regretted a single day it is definitely not a service but a calling when lord chief became chief justice of india those days were very difficult entire nation was suffering with the covid scare though our bar association members and everyone they were working those days and dowl was those day joint secretary and vikas singh was president but despite that the environment was not good even people were not meeting each other everybody was in mask those days lord chief helped at least several hundred advocates to get admitted in the hospital without even telling to anyone he used to know that he comes to know that this lawyer or some this family having some problem he immediately calls the doctor or some hospital and they were accommodated and treatment was provided to them it's not an lordship has a great quality of making friends lordship has made around 21 supreme court judges from the day he joined the collegium in which honorable justice sanjeev khanna justice b r gavai and surekant sir they were also part of that and thereafter when lord chief became chief justice of india he appointed nine of them among all those appointees seven of them are going to become chief justice of india as far as nalsa is concerned when lord chief was chairman of nalsa i requested that there are only few mediators in supreme court and there should be more mediators and they should get the training from the supreme court mcpc lordship directed mcpc and the file was also came to nalsa and there after 250 mediators are now trained because of lordship's effort as far as supreme court legal services authority is concerned honorable justice chandrachud on constitution day advised us that lawyers should provide pro bono services to the litigants especially in the supreme court i said that each and every lawyer in the supreme court bar they all are willing to provide the services and most of them are have never charged a single penny from the sclc so that is also a kind of cooperation provided from the bar to the bench whatever demands be made to the honorable justice and be ramanna sir each and every demand was taken as if he is demanding from the bench and he tried to resolve each and every issue he tried to do whatever was possible and he extended all kind of support to each one of us even rahul mentioned about the utility utility launch even our this waiting area near the old uh, this other chamber block the other side and not only this even canteen other facilities cooler coolers whatever was required that was done i re recall the day when there was a function in the bar council on that day honorable justice narsimha said that justice nb ramanna is like sachin tendulkar because he performed so well and i say and i make a statement lordship that you are still playing you will be retiring because the inning is over you are not out <laughs> on the first occasion when lordship was the captain of cricket team i don't know what his strategy he opted with the help of honorable justice sundaresh that this judges team succeeded and they won against us otherwise mostly we used to succeed lord chief has delivered so many important judgments in one of them is the kirti and another versus oriental insurance company where lord chief 
held that despite the fact home makers do not have a fixed income their contribution to the economy must be recognized other than this lordship about the investigating agency when lordship was giving a lecture and on democracy role and responsibility of investigating agencies lordship said the central bureau of investigation has come under deep public scrutiny according to lordship action and inactions cbi had often raised questions on its credibility he said it was need of the hour to reclaim social legitimacy other than this there are several judgments even recently lordship when this uh, review petition was there on uh, on enforcement directorate lordship said that especially the central government on two specific issues the notice has been issued that is one is not providing accused with the enforcement case information report that is called ecir and then reversal of presumption of innocence these steps even from the judicial side are have great importance i feel that lordship is not going to retire we all know that he is such a energetic man he is 100% going to be here today while this uh, last i will just mention it that today when this uh, we were addressing the court mr dusyan dave is here he was in tears and after seeing him lady sip hema kohli was also in tears i have never seen a judge crying on the bench and mr dave we all know that he is known for a different version of dave but today we saw his different version <laughs> he cried because he had a wrong assessment when lordship took over as cji he had a presumption and under a wrong assumption that lordship may not be up to that mark now he realized he cried and lordship has already forgiven everyone whoever has said whatever they have said lordship has been a farmer he knows how to catch the bulls by horn so there there is no need for worry at last i will simply say that any judge like the chamber committee was there honorable justice gavai honorable justice surikant and honorable justice maheshwari sir they are members that chamber committee has been given full independence full authority and because of that only by the two or three meetings it was possible that everyone is able to get the chamber and occupy the chamber it was not possible otherwise <laughs> only a strong judge can listen to the demands of the bar otherwise we all know registry sometimes or other issue or this issue they will create some problem and it goes into the vein for that we actually admire honorable lordship at last i will recite a sanskrit shloka which is completely suitable to the personality of lordship krodo harses darpas sahitastavo manya manita yamarth kanste savai rajar si uchyate it means that person who overwhelms his anger joy sorrow and pride who has no false modesty neither confusion nor vanity who can always stay equanimous in mind is undoubtedly a wise deserving position of leadership lordship we all admire you you have been our hero i we are really grateful and i welcome each one of you who are here and also to them who are waiting outside thank you so much thank you pradeep sir may now request mr tushar mehta learned solicitor general of india to kindly give his address <coughs> honorable chief justice of india ramanna sir the honorable chief justice of india designate justice lalit sir the honorable judges of the supreme court of india and the high courts present here the very loving family of uh, my lord justice ramanna my dear friend vikas singh my friend pradeep rai and rahul koshik my seniors sitting here and my dear friends friends it is said 
that a judge delivers judgments throughout his judicial career and the bar delivers the judgment the day on which the judge retires and this is our verdict not a single chair vacant people waiting outside and that is the judgment of the bar how popular and how lovingly your how popular you are and how lovingly your lordship would be remembered possibly your family members may perhaps not be aware about the love and affection you are getting outside namely the supreme court of india friends there are three things which i can talk about as a law officer which shows immense contribution of my lord justice ramanna the first is the speed with which appointments were made in various high courts and various tribunals as my lord justice lalit remarked in the morning one third of the total strength of judges in india is filled up by the present college one third of the total country strength and the mission mode in which my lord justice ramanna used to interact very diplomatically with all stakeholders to ensure that the appointments are timely made not only in the supreme court in the high court in the supreme court but also in the tribunals was amazing and i have been mostly as the learned attorney general also said on the receiving end trying to help as much as we can the second contribution which we can never forget is my lord justice ramanna zeal for infrastructural development of various courts throughout the country everything is documented and i don't need to or i don't wish to read everything which is contributed by justice ramanna so far as the infrastructure is concerned but this needs not just the judicial or judicious approach but a diplomatic approach by an administrator because the chief justice of india apart from being a judge of the supreme court is also interacting with several stakeholders and he requires to be not only learned but he requires to be a good and efficient administrator my lords have exhibited and established that my lords were both so far as the judgments delivered by my lords are concerned all of us are lawyers belonging to the same fraternity there is no point in uh, repeating which judgments are delivered but one thread in every judgment which i have found as a citizen of india not as a law officer or as an advocate was the judgments were capable of being understood by a common man there were no pretensions of being learned or philosophical about the law even a common man knowing the language knows what the supreme court of india has decided that was that is an amazing quality it's very difficult for a judge to not only be precise but to be simple in judgment writing as a human being i had occasions to know shri nv ramanna the on the, the the human being the person not the judge a very humble and polite human being i have never seen him being brash negligent rash or arrogant with anyone a very loving family man and a very loving grandfather very few people would perhaps know about this aspect of justice ramanna's personality but from very reliable sources 
I have gathered one information which I am going to make public. Apart from law, my Lord has a different passion and that passion is regarding Telugu literature. This may not be a secret. But the secret is that his lordships are contemplating after retirement writing a romantic novel in Telugu. <clears throat> I have stopped my research at that. I, I did not go into the roots what inspired his lordship to write a romantic novel after retirement. My lord's duty, when he is not reading law or doing something regarding the court work, is generally, I am told, reading Telugu literature. And maybe we may come to know after some time, after a year or so, that there was an eminent Telugu poet sitting with us a year before. <clears throat> I, I wish his lordships a very good health. Uh, his lordships... I'm told, would be here in Delhi and his love, affection and guidance would constantly be available to us and we value whatever contributions your lordships have made, which is immense. And I wish his lordship good health, a very contented life and a very satisfactory uh, life with the family because I'm sure he must have missed those opportunities, those moments to be with one's spouse, children and grandchildren. My lords, on a Friday evening, the presence of lawyers in this number speaks itself. I have nothing more to add. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tushar, sir. The legacy of justice... Ramanna would be the way the judicial appointments <coughs> were made in the High Court, Supreme Court and Tribunal in last 16 months. And he was always a very warm person. Even whenever we would meet him, he would meet all, all, everyone with very warmly and was always very courteous. With this, may I now request Mr. Vikas Singh, Senior Advocate and President SCBA to kindly give his address. My Lord, the Chief Justice of India, Justice N.B. Ramanna, Justice Yuju Lalit, Chief Justice of India, Designate, Shri Tushar Mehta, Lanit Solicitor General for India, Mr. Pradeep Rai, Vice President, Rahul Kaushik, Secretary, Honorable Judges of the Supreme Court present here, Family Members of Justice Ramanna, Judges from other courts visiting here, members of the bar, members of the registry, members of the media. It is a very big moment in the sense that Justice Ramanna gave a different perception to the judiciary in his entire tenure as Chief Justice of India. His tenure made it absolutely clear within the country as well as outside the country that the Indian judiciary is relevant, is vibrant, is alive to the rights of our people, is always there to uphold the constitution and its values, and Last but not the least, it is always there to protect the civil liberties of our people of this country. His tenure reflects that he really gave importance to the we the people written on our constitution because ultimately the constitution was drafted as a document given by the people. It was for the people. And the judiciary is meant to always interpret it in such a manner 
that the people are always considered as first and their liberties are also always kept as the most important justice rabanna started off as a student leader at the age of 18 he was a journalist at the age of 22 became a lawyer at the age of 25 he was keen to join politics and with his intellect and with his ability and with his personality his charisma i personally feel that it is a loss for politics because if he had been there probably he would have been the prime minister of india today it is our it is our good fortune it is our good fortune that he chose to the legal profession and this is the this is the highest you can get here and he got here so a great tribute to you to you sir for firstly taking the call of joining this profession and ending up being the head of this family looking after this family nurturing this family and also ensuring that the country feels that the rule of law is supreme that the constitution is supreme sir is a god fearing person he is a devotee of balaji devotee of shirdi sai baba i remember whenever i used to go to shirdi uh, to balaji and give my hair you see immediately say this is obviously Bal balaji you should have told me i would have arranged for your darshan and it was so humbling to even hear this from him that is the kind of connect he has maintained with all of us sir has done a great work in promoting the alternative dispute resolution in this country he with the help of justice seema kohli in telangana could set up this international arbitration and mediation center which is a world class facility and the vision is that un, that today when singapore and london and paris are considered to be the arbitration hubs of the world we should bring the india into the same map where india is also considered as one of the preferred destinations for arbitration <laughs> during his tenure he gave a very strong signal and which we are all thankful for him that the our judiciary is strong independent and will never shirk from performing its responsibility or in performing its constitutional obligations especially with regard to civil liberties i don't want to dwell on his cases because his cases are so many that uh, i'll probably end up the whole evening doing that but one case in particular which i am really moved by is the one which he dealt very recently where i had the privilege of appearing in front of him was the matter of freebies by political parties <laughs> the problem which honorable justice ramanna and the bench were grappling were how to give a judicial boundary to a purely political act a political act which today is resulting in states likely to getting bankrupt by these offers a state for instance having a 6 lakh crore debt starts with a freebie offer of another several lakh crores for the people just to get into power but ultimately that's politics ultimately what does how does the court step in and i was very impressed by his concern i was impressed by way he tried to keep the boundaries intact he never crossed the boundary he said within our boundary we have to set the terms we have to ensure that the public money the tax payers money is not thrown away just for taking power 
and that feeling which i saw during the hearing shows actually it was on the last few days of his hearing so shows exactly what he is and what his entire tenure has been with regard to his handling of sensitive matters which have political overtones and where the judiciary being one of the organs of the state has to ensure that it stays within the limits prescribed by the constitution which is of separation of powers sir you have been very nice to the bar and i can never forget the the goodies that we have got this building was not made available to us for almost 4 years this this very building where we are having this this auditorium where we are having this farewell today i remember justice indu malhotra's farewell we asked for the building that was my last tenure it was not given because there was a decision earlier by the earlier chief justice that it is not to be given to the bar at all it started raining it was not rainy season we had only one umbrella and the only umbrella since she was the chief guest of that day so we had to only provide that umbrella to her the rest of the people were suffering in rains so sir you understood that we are a part of the institution we are equal stakeholders in this institution and with that objective we requested you sir that this is if denying us this facility is actually only lip service when you say that we are equal stakeholders of this institution and in your tenure we got this facility five six uh, uh, five six judges have retired and we have had functions here and sir your popularity is visible by the people standing apart from all the chairs being taken and i am told i haven't gone outside i am told there are probably equal number of people standing outside we are also on youtube lot of people have taken the youtube link from me media has taken the youtube link from me and all that we see here today probably 10 times the number or 100 times the number would be watching all this on youtube this sir shows your popularity and the respect that you have gained as chief justice of india our chambers were also lying for four years ready in all respects again for some technical reason or the other it was not being allotted so within your tenure the bar is happy yesterday in fact i am so touched by the gesture yesterday that one day before although the allotment had happened a couple of days earlier but you could in insist upon the registry that please don't delay any further the letters of allotment have to go out before you retire and that was given yesterday it it shows how much you feel for the family which is the lawyer's family and as somebody else said that you take similar care for the judges as well you treat them also as your family and that is how because you are able to manage them as as part of one large family you are successful in getting judicial appointments done you are successful in getting or, uh, uh, selections made in the collegium and because of which we have had the probably the highest numbers of appointments in a particular period of time than any chief justice has had ever in the recent past <laughs> sir you were Uh, your 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 tenure was marred a little bit by covid because covid did not allow you to function the way you could have functioned for this entire uh, period as chief justice of india but within those limitations you still ensured that the wheels of justice keeps on moving the disposal remained and as and when the uh, covid was uh, coming down you also tried to ensure that the normalcy comes into the court and uh, and we are grateful that uh, this this institution which in spite of the worst of covid times kept on working and dispensing justice we were all we were all in that era where we had not learned the online mode we had not been brought up in the online board we all learned the online platform we all uh, sort of uh, understood how it works and because of this 
justice delivery continuing even during COVID time. But I'm sure if you had had a tenure when COVID was not have been there, a lot more could have been done for the institution. Justice Ramanda's love for mother literature just now, Mr. Choshar Mehta has already said, of course, I didn't know about his idea of this romantic novel. I'll also not do my research to find out what is the inspiration for that romantic novel. I'm sure it will be his wife, but still, I would still like to do my <laughs> research. He's, Justice Ramanda is passionate about Carnatic music. Justice Ramanda's wife, Srimati Shivmala, has been a great support for him. And it is, it, is all, it is something which is very common that behind every successful man there is women. And obviously it is Srimati Shivmala. Thank you, madam, for coming here and gracing this occasion. He also has two daughters, N.V. Tanuja and N.V. Bhuvana, who are also here with us. And we wish both of you a very good, prosperous life. And I'm sure with your father retiring, you'll be able to take care of him now and ensure that he gets all that he has missed in his busy tenure as a judge and then as a Chief Justice of India. I once again wish Justice Ramanda a very uh, good, uh, happy, healthy and prosperous life. And uh, I'm sure it's just a new innings which he's starting. And uh, this new innings will give him more fulfillment and more satisfaction. Thank you. Thank you, Vikas, sir. Is it, Justice Ramana's initial tenure was marred by COVID, but administratively, he was always available for us. <clears throat> May I now request Honorable Mr. Justice Yuyo Lalit, Chief Justice of in India designate, to kindly give his address. Honorable Justice N.V. Ramana, Chief Justice of India, Mrs. Shivmala Ramana, family members of Justice Ramana, my esteemed colleagues, brother and sister judges of the Supreme Court, Mr. Tushar Mehta, learned Solicitor General for India, Mr. Vikas Singh, President, Supreme Court Bar Association, the Honorable Vice President, Supreme Court Bar Association, Secretary and other office bearers of the Supreme Court Bar Association, President and office bearers of Supreme Court Advocates on Record Association, some of the Honorable Judges of High Court who are present today, learned senior advocates of the court who are present today, junior advocates, members of the registry, members of print and electronic media, ladies and gentlemen. It's a tough time for somebody like me. Look at the popularity of my predecessor. How am I going to don that mantle now, hereafter? <laughs> right at the outset, even before I assume office, I express my complete inability to match and go anywhere near this popularity. <laughs> the achievements of Justice Ramana are well known have been actually placed before you. It was very heartening and very emotional to see some of the speeches which were given in the morning in court number one. And that's the real tribute because a person who demits the office, who leaves that chair for the last time, if that's the tribute which he receives, while sitting there in the chair and while just about to leave that chair. That, to my mind, is the most fitting tribute that a person can actually receive. So I won't repeat all of that, 
but two achievements which really stand out. Number one, I said in the morning, on the side of appointments, more than 250 appointments of judges of the High Court in this country. If you compare the present strength of the judges of the High Courts in this country, it is 750. So almost one third of the strength is as a result of recommendations made by the Collegium in last about, say, 14 months or so. And I also said in the morning that there may be a time in future that perhaps large number of judges of the Supreme Court may have been those who were appointed in that year. So that's the immense contribution that, that is before you. The second facet which I noticed was in the Chief Justices and Chief Ministers Conference. The way Justice Ramana meticulously and very forcefully tried to persuade all the chief ministers and chief justices to concentrate on issues concerning infrastructure in the, in the district and lower judiciary. That was remarkable. After the conference was over, the conference went on for about two days or three days. The results of that conference are resonating now. And I must tell and share with you that as a chairperson of NALSA, one of the projects that we are seeking to implement is to have what is called Public Defender's Office or Legal Aid Defense Council. And we are insisting that in every district there must be a legal a defense counsel systems office which will be on the lines as public prosecutor's office and the issue came up very well that office would require some space and the kind of perseverance which was shown in the chief justices and chief ministers conference that I must say that in every district the concerned states are willing to provide us minimum of 800 square feet of area to have the office of public defender in every district. And I must say that this is something which, which owes because of Justice Ramana's perseverance and the issues that he took up in Chief Justice and Chief Minister's conference. I know you all are waiting for Justice Ramana to address you. You haven't come here to listen to me. <laughs> but very well, since I have the opportunity, and I know that my role is now cut to size, so therefore let me place some of the parts which I intend to do in my next innings of 74 days. Three areas. I had a word with the office bearers of Supreme Court Bar Association and Supreme Court Advocates on the Record Association earlier in the part of the day. One, and this is where we need to take the cue from Justice Ramana and then carry forward. One area which is listing, and I must assure you that we will strive hard to make listing as simple, as clear, and as transparent as possible. <laughs> Number two, the area which is mentioning of urgent matters, that also I will certainly look into. I will have a word with all my learned colleagues on the bench. And we will certainly sort that out. And very shortly you will have a clear-cut regime where any urgent matters can freely be mentioned before the respective courts. <laughs> the third area, and that is of listing of matters before the Constitution benches and matters which are specially referred to benches of three judges. 
I have always believed that the role of the Supreme Court is to lay down law with clarity, consistency, and the best possible way to do it is to have larger benches as early as possible, wherever the matters are referred to such benches, so that the issues get clarified immediately. The matter has consistency, and people are well aware of what exactly are the contours of the peculiar positions in law. So we will strive, to ha strive hard to say that yes, we will always have at least one constitution bench functioning all throughout the year. <laughs> Friends, beyond that, I can't say anything more at this stage. Very well, all of you are waiting for Justice Ramana to address you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We are very hopeful of next 74 days when you are going to take over as chief. I just want to point out, we had a two-hour meeting. He, he used to take over officially tomorrow, but he called us and scored both. We had a two-hour meeting. We pointed out all the issues. Ms. Saj just pointed out regarding listing and other issues. We are very hopeful that we are going to see further improvement. With this, for what we all are waiting to hear Justice Ramanna. May I now request Honorable Mr. Justice N.V. Ramanna, Chief Justice of India, to kindly give his address. <laughs> Honorable Justice Uday Umesh Lalit, Chief Justice of India designate, my brother and sister judges of the Supreme Court of India, Sri Tushar Mehta, Solicitor General of India, Sri Vikas Singh, President and Office Bearers and the members of the Supreme Court Bar Association, Sri Pradeep Kumar Rai, Vice President, Sri Manoj Kumar Misra, President and Office Bearers of the members of the Supreme Court Advocate on Records Association, law officers, senior advocates, and members of the bar, other distinguished guests, media persons, and ladies and gentlemen. I am searching for words to adequately express my gratitude for the good words spoken about me by all. I am very happy to see judges, senior advocates, advocates, members of the bar, people from legal fraternity, all my well-wishers, family friends, family members who have come here taking trouble to reach this place and bid farewell to me. I thank each and every one of you for assembling here and for showering your blessings on me and my family. You all know where I started. My life's journey began in a remote village called Ponnavaram in Krishna district of Andhra Pradesh, where electricity, roads, and basic communities were not available. First time I saw electricity when I was 12 years old. I learned the alphabets of English around the same time. We used to reach school by walking on muddy roads across the fields and crossing the streams. With a lot of struggle and hard work, I have come up in life. For this, I thank first my gurus, that is my parents and the teachers in various government schools. I am indebted to all my teachers, lecturers, because the essence of education that they had given to me was helpful not only for the purpose of acquiring academic knowledge, but also helped in providing necessary moral strength and courage to face any calamity in life. This arduous journey finally brought me to Delhi. This long journey marked by many experiences, most of which are 
sour rather than sweet. As the young age of 17 years, I could lead a trade union around 10,000 workers. At the same time, I could also lead students, farmers, and employees. I was immersed in so many agitations and struggles. I have also suffered on account of the emergency excesses. In fact, I lost an academic year in this count. Confronting problems and resolving issues is not something new to me. This period enabled me to interact with persons of various ideologies and broadened my horizons. They taught me as how to live in isolation in an environment where you cannot express or share your thoughts of, on any of these issues. I witnessed the resilience of human existence, the power of human struggles, dignity in poverty, and most importantly, unshakable hope and faith. Through these ordinary everyday experiences, I developed the extraordinary fashion of serving the people. Being a first-generation lawyer, I have faced many challenges in my life and realized that except the hard work, there is no shortcut to success. The journey of struggle and bitter, and bitter experiences in my career helped me to diversify my activities. I had the opportunity of defending the state in several cases. I watched the important events of this country unfolding from close quarters. I always accepted rejection as God's reduction and retained my honesty and integrity. I want to every advocate to remember that sometimes life scares you and beats up you, but there is a day when you realize that you are not just a survivor, you are a warrior. You are tougher than anything that is thrown you away. My professional life was also full of challenges. To begin with, I was in two minds, to be a judge or to become the people to offer leadership. I believe in destiny, in God, and the blessings of the Almighty. It has been the honor of my life to be elevated as a judge. I accepted it with full all humility. I always remembered myself while functioning as a judge on my privileged obligation to discharge services to this great society. Once I became a judge, I gave my heart and mind to it. From the date I joined bench, I reached the highest possible position in the judiciary. I have subjected to conspiratorial scrutinies. My family and I suffered in silence. But ultimately, the truth will always prevail. Satyamaya Vajayate. At this juncture, I am reminded the words of Martin Luther King Jr. The ultimate measure of man is not where he stands in the moment of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenges and controversies. Unquote. Anything and everything that I could achieve were only after facing a lot of struggle, setbacks, and hardships in life. I have embraced all the challenges that came my way and strengthened myself and understood that every failure carried with a seed of equivalent advantage. I never claimed myself to be a scholarly judge or a great judge, but I have always believed that the ultimate purpose of justice delivery system is to provide justice to the common man. I have elaborated in my career earlier speeches as how difficult the life of a judge is. Your health also gets ruined in the process. Only judges and lawyers understand this aspect of judges' life. It is for you people, lawyers particularly, to explain to the people of hard work involved in a judge's life. Now coming back to the jurisprudence. In the last 75 years of our jurisprudence have evolved considerably. Our judiciary is not defined by a single order or decision. Yes, at times it felt sort of people's expectations 
but most of times they have championed the cause of the people. It is widely predicted that the A.K. Gopalan case, the due process of law was history. But this court in case of Mahanaka Gandhi restored what was taken away earlier. Similarly, A.D.M. Jabalpur was seen as a death canner on personal liberty. Subsequently, the error was stood rectified by nine judges bench in K. S. Swami. The institution never hesitated to remedy itself. Your hope upon the institution cannot be so weak that it, is, that it is shattered with one perceived unfair judgment. When it comes to an individual judge, the expectations are very high. In the game of cricket, the player is expected to hit every ball for a six. After all, everyone loves to hit six but and win a close off for himself and the team. But only a player knows as how to deal with each ball given the conditions of the pitch, the style of bowling and the placement of the fielders. <laughs> At times, the circumstances may not allow him to score even a single run. The advocates are best placed to understand this predicament of a judge and dispel wrong notions about them. Here I would like to read out the senior advocate Mr. Sanjay Hirde wrote in a newspaper article, I quote, This is in the context where I have decided a case of Anuradha Bhasin, where right to speech, right to access to internet, etc. There is a criticism that I have not given full relief. I quote that article. When a senior advocate asked Justice Bhagavati about the dichotomy between the reasoning and the relief, that is in Menaka Gandhi and R.D. Setti, the judge explained that his brother judges were only concerned with the relief being denied in those cases. As long as Justice Bhagavati followed their lead on the relief, he got to write the judgment and lay down doctrine of law that continue to operate deep into the future. Every lawyer who today wins on the basis of R.D. Setti and Menaka Gandhi judgments owes his victories in no small measure to Bhagavati's foresight." Unquote. In earlier days, the bar used to play a proactive role in the resistance. The members of the bar used to willingly associate themselves with various social causes. It is the legal battles initiated by the Bar Association that have led to progressive interpretation of the Constitution. It is in this spirit that Bar must work to strengthen democracy. One aspect that I want to bring to your notice is my choice of traveling across the country almost every weekend to speak to the public through various events. The popular perception is that the Indian judiciary was alien and quite distant to the general public. There are also still millions of suppressed people who need judicial help, who are apprehensive to approach the judiciary in times of need. My experience so far has convinced that in spite of fulfilling its constitutional mandate, the judiciary does not find adequate reflections in the media, thereby depriving the people of knowledge about the courts and the constitution. I felt it was my constitutional duty to dispel these notions and bring the court closer to the people by way of generating awareness and building confidence among the people about the judiciary. From what I get to hear from the common people during my visits, I am happy to note that people are able to engage with me on my subject in their language. I have actively tried to promote a sense of, a sense of belongingness of the people with the system. My constant endeavor was to make the people aware, not just about their rights and obligations, but also about the constitutional scheme and democratic values and the institutions. My sincere efforts was to initiate a dialogue. As a part of my public speaking engagements, I have focused on certain subjects of institutional importance. The focal point of any justice delivery system is the litigant, the justice seeker. But our system, practice, rules being colonial in regime may not be best suited to the needs of Indian population. 
the need of the hour is the indianization of our legal system when i say indianization i mean the need to adapt to the practical realities of our society and to localize our judicial delivery system i have pushed for modernization of judicial infrastructure as a means of providing access to justice i also try to highlight the difference between the arrears and backlogs to put things in perspective arrears refer to delays that are unwanted unwarranted every delay is not an arrear some cases of delay might due to valid reasons on the other hand backlogs refers to a situation where the number of cases instituted in a period is more than the number of cases disposed of in same period i am happy to inform you and thank my colleague judges and collegium judges brother justice lalit justice kanvilkar justice dhananjay chandrachur justice nageshwar rao and consulting judges in the last 16 months we could appoint 11 judges to the apex court and 255 recommendations for various high courts now already 224 as appointed and this amounts to nearly 20% of the total sanction strength of the high court due to our concerted efforts we could make considerable progress in appointing more number of women judges and promoting social diversity on benches we got 15 new chief judges of various high courts during the same period this process is a reflection of the coherence and determination of the judges to strengthen our institution to further the goal of justice these are the issues that i tried to do my best to solve however i acknowledge there are many other issues that the system is facing and it needs scientific assessment from the very beginning my stand is that since independence no systematic assessment of the judicial system in the in india has taken place the bar the bench and the government are all equal stakeholders in the justice delivery mechanism we need their coordination efforts to revamp the entire system the issues faced by the judiciary cannot be looked into isolation the judiciary is an independent when it comes to adjudication of cases but with respect to finances or appointment it is still dependent on the government to coordinate and to get the cooperation from the government the interaction is inevitable but interaction does not mean influence i hope this dialogue between the judiciary and the public will continue i am debiting my office with utmost contentment when you ultimately judge me as a judge i would like to say that i may be judged as a very ordinary judge but one who greatly relished and enjoyed the job i may be judged as one who meticulously followed the rules of the game and did not trespass into provinces problem more particularly as one who recognized preliminary the moral power of a judge i may be remembered as a judge who heard the senior and junior alike <laughs> as a judge i always wanted my name to be etched on the hearts of the people through my conduct and behavior rather than case law and generals <laughs> i want to remain in those vibrant hearts which will give me warmth and keep me going forever i have seen i have been seen the flow of emotions in court room number 1 this morning this is a reflection of the strong sense of your belongingness with the institution i was touched by the display of emotions in particular by attorney general sibal mr dave and solicitor general with my best intentions and efforts i have carried out my solemn duty with a debt of gratitude to my motherland this country has provided me with many opportunities and happiness and it was an honor to serve you all both your support and criticism has carried me this far the end of my tenure just marks the end of my constitutional assignment however i shall fulfill the constitutional vow till the end of my last breath i did my best whatever i can it is with the 
cooperation of all my brother and sister judges. Credit goes to everyone. I never miss an opportunity to quote the famous Telugu poet Mahakavi Gurujada. Desa mante matti kadoi, desa mante manshloi. Gurujada gave a universal definition to the concept of nation. He said, a nation is not merely a territory. A nation is essentially its people. Only when people it, its, when, when we, it, when people its progress, the nation progress. Swantalabam kanta manukoni purguvari ke thodu padavai. Gurujada went on to urge people to raise above one's own interest and to extend a helping hand to those in need. If we put this principle in practice, we will soon start seeing a better world free of conflicts and violence. It is towards establishing such a progressive world that we collectively need to endeavor as a global citizens. Enlightened citizens and as the most important stakeholders of our judicial system, I urge upon you all to think about the society, the nation, that is the people, it is the universal brotherhood that will bridge the gap. Before I conclude, I would like to place on record my sincere thanks to all my colleagues on the bench. I congratulate first my brother, Justice Lalit, Chief Justice of India, designated who is going to take over tomorrow. I am confident that his tenure will be a grand success. I request all of you to extend fullest support and cooperation to my brother Justice Lalit. He has already proved his leadership while he is the chairperson of NALSA. I had no doubt that his focus and priority will definitely take care of the institution. I had the privilege of being guided by the learned Attorney General Sri K. K. Venugopal, the Bhishma Patamaha of the Indian Legal Fraternity. <laughs> I also thank the Solicitor General of Sri Tushar Mehta for his active assistance to the court. On a personal level, he is a good human being. He comes forward readily to help anyone in need. I want to correct here, Mr. Tushar Mehta, just like the IB reports, this is your report that I am going to write in romantic novel is not correct. I may, I may write some books on literature, I may write some books about the historical events which has taken place while I was in, as an advocate and all that. Mr. Vikas Singh, I need not tell, is a strong leader, the president of the SCBA, a dynamic man. He is a very <laughs> persuasive. But only one caveat I want to advise Vikas is, Vikas ji, with little soberness he can achieve very more. I would like to sincerely thank the Secretary Generals, the registrars of the entire registry of the Supreme Court. My personal residential staff has worked with me for a long time. I thank them all for their constant dedication and hard work. The media has been extremely cooperative in disseminating the information about the judiciary. You share the equal burden of dispelling myths and notions. I thank you for being an active partner in this collaborative project of strengthening the judiciary. I thank each one of the journalists who have been covering the proceedings of the Supreme Court diligently, efficiently, and instantly. My journey so far has been made possible due to innumerable sacrifices made by my reward parents, Ganapati Rao and Sarojini Devi. And my two elder sisters, Prabhanjani and Vani. My wife, Sivamala, stood me like a rock through thick and thin. She has been my equal partner in all my struggles and successes. I am blessed with two loving daughters, Dr. Sri Bhuvana and Sri Tanuja, who continue to cheer my life. Now, my family also includes Ritesh and Trilok, my son-in-laws, and with three grandchildren, Sriya and 
Sri Nitya and Sri Virat. I do not have to worry about my post retiremental phase. They will take care of me. <laughs> With these words, I must thank one of all of you, my friends, my childhood friends, and my relatives, some judges, lawyers, came across all the way from remote places from Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, and all that. I thank each and every one of them. Before concluding, I want to say, because you must have seen, I am correcting my draft on the table also. Because after going back tomorrow, today morning uh, court, I started dictating this uh, note. Uh, so I could not properly place the, some of these things. It's my favorite quote, but I want to tell you. This is a English politician said it. I quote, history is not the burden of one man or woman alone, but some are called upon to meet a special share of its challenges. History is more than the path left by the past. It influences the present and can shape the future, unquote. Only history can judge as to the influence of the path left by me on the present and the future. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. I have no words to say when I see the standing ovation and the love which sir is receiving. You spoke from the heart, sir. Your life is an inspiration from how humble background you can reach the highest office in judiciary in this country. A life of a Supreme Court judge is not easy. You have to read so many briefs, have to give judgments, and a life of a Chief Justice of India is all the more tougher. You have to do the administrative work also. We wish you, sir, a very happy, healthy, retired life, sir. And it's time to give to your family and for your passion to write a book, sir. Now, I'll read the message given by Honorable Mr. Justice N.V. Ramana, Chief Justice of India, for the members of the bar. This institution is the last bastion of justice, and bar is its armada. I urge all of you to protect it jealously. When this institution was th uh, th threatened externally, History has witnessed bar rising to the occasion on numerous occasions. It is only when you insulate this institution can this institution grow. I request all of you to be critical, not cynical. Be courteous, not confrontational. Be cognizant, not callous. Be creative, not cribbed. Nurture young talent. Set examples. Hone necessary skills. Adopt new technologies. Encourage women lawyers and support legal aid. Work as one toward achieving justice and making it accessible also. Your work is not like any other vocation. It's calling for public service. India needs you as soldiers of democracy, as fighters for liberty and keepers of rule of law. Thank you, sir, for the kind words for the bar. <clears throat> may, may I now request Mr. Vikas Singh, President SCB and Vice, Mr. Pradeep Rai, Vice President SCBA to kindly present a memento on behalf of SCBA to Honorable Mr. Justice N.V. Ramana, Chief Justice of India. May I now request Mr. Rohit Pandey, Joint Secretary, SCBA, to kindly give vote of thanks. Thank you, Rahul ji. First of all, Ramana sir, aapko sadar padam. Ham log aapko bhool nahi paayenge. Sir, 
सर आप हमारे दिल में बसे हैं वी आर फॉर्चुनेट दैट वी हैड वन ऑफ द मोस्ट एफिशियंट चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया एंड बाई योर ग्रेस द बार वॉज बेनिफिटेड इन योर टेन ओवर वी कॉन्ग्रेचुलेट ऑनरेबल मिस्टर जस्टिस एन वी रमना फॉर सक्सेसफुली सर्विंग इज ऑफिसियल टेन ओवर एज ए चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया एंड वी ऑल्सो विश हिम लक फॉर द अपकमिंग टेन ओवर ऑफ वर्किंग टूवर्ड्स द ग्रेटर गुड ऑफ द सोसाइटी वी शुड श्योर बी सक्सेसफुल वी हैव सच श्योरिटी ऑफ सक्सेस ओनली एज रमना सर हैज बीन प्रिंसिपल पर्सन नॉट ओनली ऑन द चेयर बट इवन ऑफ द चेयर ही हैज अटेंडेड द गिरवांस ऑफ द बार इफेक्टिवली एंड हैज ऑलवेज एक्टेड एज ए स्ट्रॉन्ग लिंक बिटवीन बार एंड बार एंड बेंच सर योर डिसीजन्स इन द इंटरेस्ट ऑफ बार विल नेवर बी फॉरगेटेड we are grateful to honorable mr justice and we ramna the chief justice of india for accepting our invitation we are grateful to family members of honorable mr justice and we ramna the chief justice of india for accepting our invitation for gracing the occasion we are also extremely grateful to honorable mr justice you lalit honorable the chief justice of india designate for accepting our invitation to preside over this function we express our gratitude towards the honorable judges of supreme court of india honorable retired judges of supreme court of india and honorable judges of high courts for gracing the occasion we wish to thank mr tushar mehta learned solicitor general of india learned law officers senior advocates senior members of the bar for their gracious presence mr manoj misra president scora mr sanesh mukherji vice president scora mr devra secretary scora mr virender kumar vansal learned secretary general mr rajesh goel and other registrar of the supreme court press electronic media persons and other distinguished guests honorable members of the bar for gracing the occasion kindly join us for high tea at ground floor <laughs>